tucked away behind a labyrinth of shops and offices and coffee shops as well. So you might have difficulty in finding it. But once there, you are in your own sanctuary. It has a garden known as the Cloister Garth. It was established uh, around 1190 as a monastery. But of course, it suffered in 1540 when Henry VIII dissolved the monasteries. But it was created a cathedral in 1541. In 1868, it underwent a major restoration by George Gilbert Scott. And much of what you see today is his work. When it comes to photographing cathedrals and churches, you are faced with the problem of low light often demanding a tripod, but some churches do not allow their use. So what does one do? Well, you could increase the ISO, or if in the case of my camera, which is the Olympus EM1 Mark II and the 12 to 100 Pro lens, both have image stabilizers. And I can hand hold, say, about a quarter of a second, and by keeping the ISO at 200. You may wish to use aperture priority to make sure that you are using the widest aperture your lens is capable of. And incidentally, if you do use program, then it's quite likely that the camera anyway, because of low light, will default to the widest uh, aperture. Depth of field might be a problem, of course, at the large aperture, but this is where, dare I say, micro four thirds becomes an advantage because you get more depth of field at any setting. Regarding white balance, that can be a problem because of all the different lighting sources then it's very difficult at the time to get the right colour balance. So what I do normally is to put it onto auto. Yes, I cheat if you like. But then, of course, I'm saving to raw. Then I can make adjustments afterwards in post-production. And finally, don't forget to check the website of the cathedral or church you intend to visit. There may be restrictions on photography, and also you might be able to find out whether you can use a tripod or not. So that is basically it when I photograph uh, cathedrals like Chester, but I do a lot of work afterwards in post-production, and very often I take shots with post-production in mind. We now come to the home studio where I do the post-production. I have, of course, saved to RAW, which gives me more flexibility as to how I adjust the image, in this case, in Adobe Lightroom. But I'm sure what I say will equally apply to many other quality products. I've been through this process before on previous productions, I'll just run through it quickly. What is perhaps of note in this particular instance is that I have customized the white balance. I found the presets didn't work, so I had to fine tune it pretty accurately to what I recall the color balance. And the other important thing is that because of extreme contrast, and at the time of photography, I tend to underexpose so that I can tame the highlights, but bring detail back into the shadows. Now with that, you've got to be very careful. The amount, of t amount you increase uh, black and shadow, if you increase it too much, then you're going to introduce noise into the photograph. And this is something I hope that I have avoided. And once, uh, 
completed, then I might transfer it into Photoshop to do some adjustments which I can't do in Lightroom or I prefer to do in Photoshop sometimes. That's a matter of choice that we all have. And I'll just finish now with a few more pictures uh, done very much to the way I have just described.